Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, so we're going to run through a SIMSPA introduction. So you may well already know who SIMSPA are, but we'll just uh, we'll we'll start off with that introduction and we'll go across our vision as an organisation. Um, we'll talk a little bit about why become uh, why you might want to become a, a partner benefit supplier, um, and also the the partnership proposition that we're building um, and that'll make sense when we talk about the the work that we've done to really understand what our partners are looking for uh, and then we'll share with you the information on on exactly that what do our partners want um, and that hopefully will help you um, if you are interested in becoming a supplier partner um, help you in terms of really preparing a meaningful offer that meets the wants and needs of our different partners. Um, and at the very end, the, the next step, so how you can progress your interest and um, and apply to become a supplier. Um, so just as way of introduction as to who uh, SIMSPR is, so we're the professional development body for the UK's sports and physical activity sector, committed to supporting, developing and enabling professionals and organisations to succeed and as a result, inspire our nation to become more active. Um, so that is our um, uh, sort of who we are as an organisation. Um, so myself, I am Phil Wright, Business Transformation Manager, um, and fortunately, I'm not by myself, um, otherwise this might just um, obliterate into a mess, and I've got a, a very, a far more helpful and organised backup, um, who is Connor. So good morning, Connor, how are you doing? Morning, Phil, yeah, good, cheers, are you? I'm very good, I'm very good, thanks. Um, so myself and Connor work within the commercial division of SIMSPA and we very much lead on supplier partnerships um, and link in with the partnership uh, department as well to be able to deliver uh, the the benefits to our different partners and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so the vision that we've got for the future is very much shaping a recognised and respected sport and physical activity sector that everyone wants to be a part of. Um, which I'm, I'm sure is something that many of the organisations joining us this morning can really uh, see and buy into. Um, and the future that we're imagining and working towards is one whereby a parent can check their child's coach is qualified and safe. A GP can identify their local chartered activity practitioner and be able to prescribe exercise. Everyone working in the sector understands their pathway to personal success. A manager can verify an employer's qualifications, um, CPD experience and how they can be deployed within the organisation. A university graduate is employable the day they graduate, which I know is, is certainly something that many people coming into the sector can really relate with. Um, and we are acknowledged as a recognised and respected prof profession. So uh, why become a, a partner supplier? So we work with hundreds of, of different partners across different categories of partners as well. And as mentioned, we will jump into those different categories that we work with. Um, but one of the biggest reasons is it's going to raise your profile. It's going to put you as an organization and your products or services in front of lots of other um, organizations that work within the sector and really enhance your profile. It's going to connect you with SIMSPA partners specifically, but in doing that, um, also connect you with our members because ultimately, while SIMSPA does partner with organizations, it's really it's the individuals, it's the members who who connect um, you know, with SIMSPA and are very much in membership. And so there is a bit of a crossover there between membership and partnership. Great exposure for you and your organization. Um, enhanced engagement. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those opportunities and what they are. And also insight as well. So uh, as an organization, and again, this is something that myself and Connor 
um, work very closely on. Um, as a, a supplier partner, we can help provide you with insight that can help you understand needs and wants of partners and therefore shape your offer or your products or services to really fit um, other needs within the sector and specifically our partners. Um, and hopefully this morning we'll be able to share with you some insight that can help do that. But coming into partnership with us as a supplier, that would be something that we would be providing you with on an ongoing basis and, and support you with. So um, in terms of the, the partnership proposition, um, so this is actually a piece of work that we're just coming to, to sort of the, the end of, um, but saying that it's very much something that will be ongoing as well. Um, so as we've, uh, over the last more than six months, I think eight months now, we've been speaking and engaging with our different partners to really understand what it is they want. Um, and this was a bit of a, almost a, a mock-up prototype of a possible brand that encapsulates uh, the wants and needs of our partners. And, and you can see in the center there, um, share more and be more. And this is very sort of general across different partnership types. Um, however, there was a real standout theme that our partners want to be able to get benefits and rewards that they're able to pass on um, and that will help them as an organization be more so the idea of share more and be more sort of encompasses this desire so as an example uh, a university is extremely committed to being able to directly support the needs of their students so that through university life and through that student life they are becoming more and more employable and more and more prepared to be able to hit industry and, and, and be able to get a job in the sector that they've just spent a lot of time, money and investment and effort in becoming qualified in. Um, and that will help them as a university if they're able to better prepare students for working life, that will help them as a university become more and really support uh, their, their graduates in stepping into industry. That was just one example, but hopefully that just kind of paints the picture for what our partners want and we will dive into this a little bit more specifically um, that just gives you an, an idea of within that share more and be more concept um, of what it was that our partners are looking for so share more you've got more opportunities and more rewards um, and then the be more in terms of them or as an organization um, benefiting, um, it would be the recognition they get, um, being more informed, being more connected and being more supported as well. So I'm going to I'm going to invite Connor to speak a little bit about this in a second. So this is a bit of a summary. Um, so when it came to speaking with our different partners, and you can see across the top there are, um, and you'll see down that chart in front of you, um, it identifies three different partner types. And these are our largest partnership categories that we as an organization work with. So you can see we work with training providers, education. So very specifically at the minute, that is higher education. So universities and then employers in yellow. Um, employers is a very broad term um, and it can cover all manner of different employers within the sector so as a few examples this includes uh, leisure operators it includes gyms both independent and chain chain gyms it could include um, sort of boot camps or, or um, a swimming franchises or swimming teaching franchises all manner of operators and organizations who employ people in sport and physical activity across the board. Um, we do engage with a lot within the exercise, health and fitness space, but we also in, include and engage with operators who work more in the sports industry. Um, and I'll hand over to Connor at this point to talk a little bit about this, what this summary slide is suggesting. Cheers, Phil. Um, so with the partners, to gain an understanding of sort of what partners would value as a benefit to the partnership itself, 
we ran a series of focus sessions and sort of held those with the three different partner categories that Phil's just dug into. Um, and from that, we were able to develop the uh, benefit categories that you can see down the left-hand side. Um, so through running these focus sessions and sort of getting an understanding of what's valued by partners, we were able to put these into categories of software and IT equipment, gym equipment, CPD, so the continued professional development, insurance and uniform or apparel. Um, and we looked at these different categories from the different perspectives of the different partners. So obviously training providers will have different needs for some of these benefits to what education facilities or employers will have. Um, but these were sort of the, the general categories that, that um, offered a valued benefit to each of our partners. Um, so on the right hand side, you can then see the value of each of those different benefit categories to each of our partner categories. Um, so, for example, software and IT was generally valued very highly across all partners. Um, and then if you look into the individual sort of wants and needs of each of those partner categories, um, it was valued quite evenly across all of those different partner categories. Um, so this just helped us to gain sort of a general understanding of what was valued and what was wanted by the partners so that we can then start to source um, specific goods or specific services that offer that overall benefit that partners are looking for, for through the actual partnership itself. Cool. Thank you, Connor. Um, I suppose one, one um, caveat to this is that we've conducted this piece of research during um, a global pandemic, which we're all fully aware of. Um, and we're also fully aware that this sort of analysis of needs and wants may well change over time. So this is a piece of work that we will continue to work on um, and make sure that we stay in touch with the, the real priorities for our partners and be able to share that back with our supplier partners so they can understand where the value is um, and how we can adapt um, products, offers, services to be able to meet these needs. Um, so that was just one thing. It was a bit of a, a COVID-19 caveat. Um, and the second thing is that whilst looking at this, you may, may look, if you are a, a supplier who offers uniform, apparel, clothing, et cetera, um, it doesn't mean to say that our partners don't find these products or services important or value them very much. Um, this is just a, a sort of a, a reflective, almost kind of um, a, a priority, you know, in terms of yeah, software yeah. and IT equipment for many of the partnership categories is of much greater importance right now. Um, and whilst uniform and apparel at the other other end of the spectrum is important right now, it's not a, a sort of a super high priority, but all of these categories are of value. And that's a really important thing to hopefully take away. Um, just wanted to kind of make that comment so that if you are looking at this and thinking, well, our product or services towards the bottom, that doesn't mean to say it's not important at all. All of these categories have value. Um, so just to talk you through the approach that we took in order to, to really get an understanding of, of where the value is. Um, so we had a bit of a three pronged uh, approach to, to the research. And as I said, you know, this initial piece of research will be something that we continue to follow up on and work with our partnership team and our partnerships um, to just continually better understand and understand in further depth. Um, so we internally ran a working session uh, with um, many, well, a number of different departments within Simspa who connect in some way, shape or form to our partners to get that early understanding of challenges and opportunities that exist within the sector and how they might be grouped um, so that we can then start to form some questions. Um, we then followed that up with some remote depth interviews. So we ran a number of 60 minute discussion sessions via Zoom. I think it was Zoom, although we may have used Teams as well, but um, but if it was all Zoom, then then great. With, uh, with eight different partners representing those three larger partnership categories. So training providers, the world of education and our employer partners as well. Um, but eight isn't all that many. So then we followed that up with a further survey 
um, which was sent out and shared with all of our partners to really clarify and, and back up what we found within those focus sessions. Um, so we used on the right hand side, you can just see a bit of a screenshot of a platform that we use called Myra, which is a really good collaborative sort of online working space that uh, that worked quite well, given that we can't all at this moment in time be in the same room um, and use sticky notes and stick them all over the walls. Um, so that was the next best thing for us. Um, in terms of the what's influenced the outcomes, um, so as mentioned, we did start with some internal working sessions. So we ran two half day collaborative sessions with multiple departments within SIMSPA to discuss and refine our early assumptions um, in regards to benefits. Um, and this really helped shape and formulate the, the type of questions that we then posed um, across each of the different partnership categories. Um, so here's some of the high level, um, we've already shared a bit of a summary um, in terms of the rewards, but just to go into that a little bit more individually for each of the partnership categories. So starting with training providers, um, a key differentiator for those offering training services is how professional their courses and their organisations are. Um, so that professional recognition, therefore, from our perspective, the Sims per Kite Mark provides a huge amount of value for training providers and how they can both differentiate and stand out within a competitive marketplace. Um, and they obviously, from our perspective, directly contribute to our to the SIMS provision by upholding and implementing the standards and therefore um, better preparing and better qualifying the workforce. From an educational perspective, so the universities who we partner with, again, the Sims per Kite Mark represents professional affiliation. So that is, of course, of huge value, um, more, offering more comprehensive and likely opportunities post university or post studies. Um, educational partners see the Sims per network as invaluable for students during and post studies. So higher education really want to link with and network with organizations to better prepare their students for working life. Um, and then employers, I'm just going to move my little video. Apologies, I'm working from one screen today. So if you see a mouse zipping about, that's just me um, trying to make best use of my, my single screen. Um, and then the employers who we work with, um, so the sector and the industry knowledge that Simspa provide is um, is now more than ever what employers are looking for and depending upon. Obviously, it has been a pretty exceptional situation over the last six, uh, 12 months even. Um, and we've been issuing and sharing a lot of guidance so that organisations and operators working within the sector can really understand the government guidelines. Um, and then with so much unknown, um, insight again is of real value and real importance uh, for our employers as they try and plan for the future. So some of the similarities across the different partnership categories. So again, the uncertainty that's been created by COVID-19 has left many of our organizations and businesses in complete darkness. Um, regarding the things needed to withstand the impact of future lockdowns, as well as how their customers will behave back in physical spaces, which is right now, I suppose that's very relevant, given that we're coming back out of lockdown once again, um, and we're stepping back into an unknown situation as to what customer and participation behaviours are going to be like. So the second one was shared benefits. So other than some operational tools, most benefits are used as ways to persuade people to join or buy from any particular organization, as well as help practitioners with access to rewards they might not have otherwise been able to use. So again, thinking about sort of products and services, it's um, offers that help the organization directly, but how perhaps can your products or service be shaped or tailored in such a way that it can almost support the consumer of our partners as well as the partner themselves. So that's perhaps something to consider when it comes to putting an offer forwards um, in becoming a, a supplier partner. 
And then again, the guidance and access. Um, the emphasis on guidance was never has never been more prominent. So with continue, continued turbulence in the handling of COVID-19 restrictions, businesses are constantly having to adapt and step one step ahead to avoid long-term financial damage. So, okay, at this point, I'm going to um, hand back over to Connor, who's going to dig into, again, within our three major partnership categories and types, um, some of the understanding that we really discovered. Um, and I'll let Connor explain uh, what the visual means that you can currently see. Cheers, sure, Phil. Um, yeah, so just digging into uh, the three different partner categories and sort of what's valued by them. Um, we looked at this from two slightly different lenses. Um, so we looked at what SimSpur as an organisation offer directly through the partnership. Um, so what do partners get sort of almost as a standard when, when joining that partnership? Um, but then the other lens we looked at is sort of the reward side to that partnership. Um, and that's that's sort of where you guys come into play, really. So it's what can we offer in terms of goods and services um, that's above and, uh, above and beyond what they just get from Sims for, its, from Sims for ourselves. Um, so one of the key themes that was sort of coming through in terms of what Sims for can provide was guidance. Um, so training providers were saying that they want reassurance that they're providing the best training they can be and the most accurate guidance to learners. Um, and this sort of links in with the kite mark and the recognition that Phil touched on earlier. Um, and we were also getting sort of the key message that training providers want the learners to feel like they know exactly what they need to do. Um, so some sort of key quotes that were coming through there that you can see below were around allowing learners to understand the importance of symptom membership um, and the ability to have a central platform um, which enables and sort of enhances CPD. Um, so just to put that into sort of a visual on the right hand side, um, you can see the division between those two lenses. So the darker shaded blue boxes on the left hand side are what partners were saying they would value from Simpa directly. And then on the right hand side, the lighter blue boxes Again, it's looking in sort of those rewards, so those goods and services um, that they would they would value and appreciate from third party um, organisations such as yourself. Um, so digging into what they would want from Simspa, um, again, it's around that support and that platform for CPD um, and networking was sort of a key theme that was coming through. Um, and built into that was insight. So networking that's based off of either um, the publishing of insight or how that insight can be used to sort of link our partners together. Um, and then in terms of the rewards, so those goods and services, um, uniform IT equipment and software coming through is very important at the minute. Um, but insurance, stationery and gym equipment, again, were, were seen as being significant and valued just perhaps not so prevalent as uniform IT equipment and software at the minute, but as Phil touched on earlier, sort of still still um, identified as being really important to training providers. Um, so just, how, just so that you sort of fully understand how the visual works, the bigger the box and the more shaded it is, that's the more times that that um, specific benefit was sort of responded to by partners. Um, so it just gives a sense as to what, what partners would really value and what they're really looking for at the minute. Cheers, Connor. Um, so when my mouse works up, we're going to jump on to the next partnership category. It's having a bit of a snooze. So that's training providers um, and moving on to education. So the universities who we engage with. Yes. So, yeah, we did the exact same thing again here. So just digging deeper into what our, um, what our university partners value from us and from external organisations as well. Um, so the key theme coming through here was engagement. Um, so there was two sort of sides to this. There was the engagement of students through insight and through um, innovative learning methods. But then there was also sort of the, the lens of engagement between the education facilities itself and other partners. Um, so one good example that was coming through from there was, um, was sort of facilitating engagement between education partners and employer partners and um, so obviously our employer partners are employers within the sector so by facilitating that engagement it helps with things like workplace learning 
but also helps to sort of bridge that relationship for future employment after the education of the students. Um, so a nice quote that came out of that underneath was that the more knowledge and support staff have from SIMSPA through things like insight and case studies of employers, the greater they can then support students with the progression. So that sort of touches on what Phil mentioned earlier around the benefits that we provide, not only directly benefiting our partners, so the education facility, but then also benefiting the consumers of those partners. So in the case of education, that would be things that benefit the students that attend that facility rather than just sort of benefiting the facility itself. Um, so again, we put that into a similar visual on the right-hand side. So you can see that Insight was uh, sort of valued highly in terms of what they can get from SIMSPA ourselves with CPD and networking and sort of support and that CPD platform, again, coming in is really important. Um, and then in terms of the third-party rewards, um, education facilities or, sorry, our education partners um, highlighted the need for gym equipment and IT equipment. Um, and this li links into the first point around um, sort of innovative learning methods. A lot of them were saying that they have that basic equipment in order to deliver sessions. But what really engages students is that equipment that allows them to sort of bring in new and in innovative learning methods. Um, and again, uniform, software and stationery were all identified as, as being valued by education partners. Thank you, Connor. And moving on to the, the third group, which I believe is our probably our biggest, if not one of the biggest partnership categories, so employers across the sector. Cheers. Um, yeah, so again, just did the exact same exercise. And in terms of key themes, the future of the workplace was coming through is really important here, um, which was interesting because as Phil mentioned earlier, we sort of, we went into the research asking partners to think with more of a long-term point of view rather than a COVID-specific point of view. So we were asking them to think of things that would benefit them post-COVID and in a sort of business-as-usual world. Um, but having said that, the, the future of the workplace and sort of that changing nature of the workplace was, was still something that employers were really considering. And even in a business as usual landscape, they, they sort of recognise that the sector is changing rapidly um, and that we need to sort of consider that in, in what we provide to those partners. Um, there was also sort of a, a reoccurring discussion that talent retention isn't perhaps as good as it should be um, and that we need to improve development in order to be able to combat that. Um, so a lot of the rewards that you'll see and a lot of the benefits that you'll see employers wanted were sort of based around that discussion um, around the changing landscape and the need for development. Um, so you'll see that in terms of direct benefits from SIMSPA, Skillsgate, networking and insight all held sort of great importance. So that's all um, concentrated around the development of staff, that networking between different employers um, an insight that, that, again, just helps with that sort of general development. Um, and then you've got SIMSPA and CPD and the platform in which that CPD is, hot, is held being, again, identified as really important. Um, and then in terms of the rewards from organisations such as yourself, um, again, software's up there. Um, and we've got gym equipment, uniform and IT equipment, again, coming in as sort of the, the key four categories. We have stationery and insurance coming in is really important. So it just gives you a sort of sense as to what our different partners are looking for and would value as benefits. Um, but yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Just, um, just there's a couple of things just to elaborate on. So if you're looking at TADA and wondering what is TADA, um, that is the, the CRM system and platform that we have for our members and partners. Um, so, so that is where, from a, a member perspective, they can upload their CPD and make sure that they are up to date with their um, with what they need to be doing every single year to keep their membership valid. 
Um, and from a partnership perspective, what they're able to do is track the CPD of their employees as well. So they can use that as a development tool. So that CRM and that functionality is what we're talking about with Tadar. Um, I just thought that'd be worth highlighting just in case that looks like a foreign language. Um, I think the rest of it is. And, and the other thing to perhaps point out is that if your product or service sits outside of the categories that are highlighted there, um, then again, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be a product or service that actually our partners might value. Um, so please don't be put off if you're looking at those categories thinking, well, actually what I offer or what we offer is not kind of identified there, there still may well be really good value. And this is a piece of work we're continuing to do and continuing to learn from. Um, bro, my mouse has gone back to sleep. Um, so in terms of the, the survey findings, I'll, I'll hand back over to Connor to just summarize again what you're looking at now, and then we'll move on to um, next steps. Sorry, Connor. If you, sorry, I don't know if that is just at my end, but um, it sounded like a, a robot. Could you just try muting and unmuting your microphone just to see if that makes a difference? Apologies if no one heard any distortion there, um, but you may have done. Is that any better? Am I sounding like a so, human? <laughs> yeah, you're not. You're no longer Optimus Prime. You're back <laughs> into the human form. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, so further to the focus session, because they were run over quite a small sample size, um, we wanted to run some surveys just to ensure that sort of the findings that were coming out of the focus sessions were representative of all our partners and not just of a select few. Um, so we ran final surveys to sort of sense check those findings and, and see if there was anything above and beyond um, what we got out of the focus sessions. Um, so these were run across, as you can see on the left hand side in the, in the top left corner, these again were run across all our different um, partner categories. Um, so we had 33 respondents overall, so sort of just consolidating what came out of the focus sessions. Um, and in terms of sort of why um, partners valued the partnership and why partners were coming into partnership with Simspet, um, the key themes that were coming out were that partners saw SIMSPA as an enhancement to the sector and a means of professionalising it. Um, and partners were also noting that SIMSPA enabled them to demonstrate to students and parents that sport and physical activity was a valid profession. And um, so it just sort of shows you the lens as to, as to what partners are looking through when they um, come into that SIMSPA partnership. So it's about that professionalisation and, and that development and that enhancement of, of what they're able to offer. Um, so we asked within the survey partners to rank the current benefits that they get. Um, and that, that was coming round sort of a, a five to seven ranking out of 10. So it shows that what we're offering is valued and, and is important, but there's definitely room to improve that. And there's definitely room to sort of reposition what we offer um, to partners to ensure that we're, we're increasing that value proposition. Um, so all the benefits and rewards were ranked. Um, and you can see again, we split that into those two sort of themes. So what they get directly from Simspa, but then what we can offer above and beyond that from other organisations. Um, and in terms of what was offered from Simspa, um, social media and sort of updates from our comms team was really valued. Um, so keeping up to date with sector trends, with the changing nature of the sector. CPD, so again, that sort of development and that professionalisation and qualification of, of um, partners and the consumers. Um, endorsements and insight and networking, again, were ranked highly. And in terms of insight, as you can see to the right, it, a lot of it was around employee needs, learner needs and the sector landscape. Um, and they were valued across the different partnership types. Um, in terms of the rewards, so again, what can be sort of offered in terms of goods and services from, from organisations like yourself, um, software, digital equipment, external CPD and insurance were coming back. So... Um, they were sort of themes that were visited within the focus sessions. And it was just good to see that that was sort of um, recognised wider as being important as well, but just to sort of re-emphasise what Phil said. 
um, they were the ones that were identified by partners at the time as being more important, but it's not necessarily to say that anything outside of those categories aren't important. It was just what was identified as being sort of the most prevalent needs there and then, really. Well, thanks again for that, Connor. Okay, so next steps, which you probably are sort of on one hand the most important, um, but from our perspective, it is really important to share with you the wants and needs of our partners because when it comes to being able to put meaningful sort of value proposition to our partners with really good offers and rewards, we know that there'll be far better uptake um, if those offers are really relevant and if they're tailored and if they are something that perhaps they're unable to get elsewhere. Um, so we really, really do have a think about sort of what we've shared with you and how, how you might be able to use that information to really tailor what it is that you put forward to our partners. Um, but in terms of what happens next, so this afternoon we will share with you um, a, a link to where you're able to complete the supplier form. Um, so that is a, a digital form that you'll be able to include all of the details of what it is that you're offering to us. Um, we'll then respond within five working days. Um, we may require some clarification. So it may be that you put an offer forward and we're perhaps not 100% certain on all of the information. So we may come back and just ask a few questions. Um, and also within that time, what we do is obviously make sure that it's it would be an offer that is relevant to our, um, to our partners. So as you might be able to imagine, Sometimes we receive offers which just wouldn't be something of interest or we believe wouldn't be of interest to our partners and therefore we may have to refuse it, but providing that it is a suitable offer um, and it fits within the framework of what we understand partners to want, um, we would then accept the offer and there'll be a contract exchange where we send contracts through to yourself. Um, and once those are signed, the offer can then go live and it gets listed on our partner portal um, on the website communicated via the partnership team. So all of our partners have a relationship manager who is able to share and make sure that their, uh, their partners are fully aware of all the different offers that are available to them. And it's also featured within the onboarding process of new partners. So each week we we welcome new partners on board so we can make sure that as new partners come into partnership, they're fully aware of all the new offers. So there's numerous touch points whereby your offer um, and your service being put forward to our partners is is kind of is presented to them and shared with them so that they've got all the information to be able to access it and take advantage of it. So that is us for now. I'm going to stop the share just so that I can hopefully see uh, where the um, the sort of the Q and A um, is, and just bring that into my screen. Um, so bear with me as I do that. Um, so now is so we finished well within time. Um, now is your time to to ask any questions. Um, so we're happy to stay on for another sort of five, 10 minutes or so and answer any questions that you may get. Um, and if not, then a little bit later on today, you'll receive an email having attended this webinar with all of the information. So with the, the link to complete the supplier form um, and a breakdown of, uh, in, in fact, I think we'll send you a copy of the slides as well so that you can refer back to some of the, the data and the insight that we've shared with you um, from our different partners. So hopefully that's all made sense. I can't, unless uh, unless my screen's frozen, I can't currently see, ah, Mark Henry, sorry, there is a question within the chat box. Um, so there is no cost at this, that is a really important question and we didn't cover it. So thank you for asking that. Um, there isn't currently a cost and I'm glad you've asked that because I've not mentioned it so far. So we partner, we have partners and we have members. Um, and some of you may already be a supplier partner for our members, uh, which is a slightly different thing to the, the supplier partnership that we have with our partners, because 
members and partners have different wants and needs. Therefore, the offers that we put forwards need to be sort of tailored to suit them. Um, so there is no cost whatsoever at this moment in time in becoming a, a partner a supplier partner. Um, I'm sure we can create a sentence that can include the word partner a third time, um, but there is no cost at this moment in time. That may change in the future, but for now at least, there is no cost um, to that. So thank you for asking that, Mark. Um, in terms of uh, Carl, I can see your question there. So are there any specific needs on insurance that members are finding missing currently? Um, that's a really good question. And probably to get better detail on that, we would probably need to do a little bit further research, which is something that, again, is an opportunity that we can open up to our supplier partners is to be able to uh, use focus sessions um, and and the engagement that we've got with our partners to really identify those types of things. Um, I mean, from a from an insurance perspective, I know that just engaging and speaking and being part of the focus sessions myself. I know liability insurance and indemnity indemnity insurance are two. Uh, of the most sort of commonly discussed insurance types across partnerships. Um, but, you know, to be able to find out, uh, get under the hood a little bit more and perhaps um, explore and find out more around that in terms of insurance needs, that's something we could support you with. Apologies, Carl, if that's a little bit vague, but it's quite a specific question and certainly something that would be good to find out more on. Um, uh, John, uh, Gregory, sorry, um, is it expected to be pro bono support or discounted packages offers for services? Um, so really it can be sort of a combination of, so, um, discounts on products and services tend to be quite favored. Um, uh, so so that is more often than not that is more the type of offer that we receive for partners or member benefits um that said that doesn't need to be the only way in which an offer can be put forwards um it may be that you want to put a resource and um, sort of forwards as well or access to a resource ultimately what we're trying to do is create real collaboration and create relationships um, between our suppliers and our partners. Um, and we find that that is achieved best when there's there's a, there's trust there. Um, and there's obviously a, a meaningful link. So we know what our partners are looking for in terms of the different types of products and services. Um, and if we can create links between our partners and suppliers of those products and services, and there's trust there, then that can work really well. Um, I don't know if that fully answers your question, um, but discounts tend to be sort of more often than not favored. However, there are other types of offers that you can put forwards as well. Um, Mark Henry, um, yes, I supply awarding organizations and training providers. Is there a method of, of suppliers becoming endorsed? For example, we provide learning material and online coursework. It'd be great if we could get this approved by Simspa and then going around. Yes, it does make sense. Absolutely. Um, and I think the answer to that is, is yes. Um, what I don't know, uh, Mark, is, is what type of education or training that you deliver. Um, however, we we have many organizations who have a uh, an endorsement, sort of a training provider partnership with us, and they're also a, a supplier partner. Um, and that can be a brilliant way of making sure that our partners really value the education, because what that means is that your training is endorsed. Therefore, if their staff or if they undertake that training themselves, then then that that training goes towards their professional progression and their professional recognition. Which, obviously, from our perspective as the Chartered Institute, that's what we're all about. Um, so that works really well. Um, Mark, what we can do is send you information on what that endorsement process looks like and put you in touch with someone from our standards and regulations department who deal with um, professional endorsement on training. Yes. Um, 
hopefully that answers um, your question, Mark. Um, Morgan, do the partners generally expect to benefit from affiliate fees from the service partners? Um, do the partners do, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I fully understand the question before I dive into an answer. Benefit from affiliate fees. Um, if you could give an example of, of sort of what you mean by that, um, that, that would be really handy, Morgan. And apologies if I'm uh, not fully getting the, the question. Um, but I think, you know, going back to the point or the question that was raised earlier by Mark um, is that there is, there is no cost. Um, you know, what we're looking to do is just create a, a proposition that includes lots of different offers um, that match the wants and needs of our partners and be able to put them forwards um, where there is no, no cost to it at this moment in time. It's just creating real value that particularly at this time, because we know employers, particularly facilities who are have had to shut for the majority of the last 12 months are now at a point where they're in certain parts of the of certain parts of the UK, the some are starting to reopen, and other areas were not quite open, but we are soon to be open. So we know they're really struggling. So this really is about being able to provide provide better support and better assistance, um, and then develop that obviously as we move into the future. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, That's great. Well. I can't see any further questions coming in. So um, just a, a big thank you for joining us this morning. Really appreciate you jumping on this call and hopefully you found it useful. We'll send the information out this, this afternoon and please do follow up if you've got any further questions. Um, so enjoy what's left of your morning. Have a good lunch and hopefully we'll be in touch very soon. Cheers. Thanks a lot, Connor. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.